What's up everyone? Ray Lopez here again today to do another device review. This time, I'm actually shocked I'm saying this because I'm not a tank person. I've always been a dripper. Most of you guys know I've been watching my videos for a while. I love to drip. Everything I pretty much review is based upon that and my build tutorials and everything like that. But today, or tonight actually, Let's see, I can't see anything here. We are discussing the brand new UD Aga T7. Wish I had some music right now. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, this is what they're calling UD's K Fun Killer. And to be honest with you guys, as much as I've been using this, because today's Tuesday night. I figured out a good build on this Thursday. I've been using it from Thursday until Tuesday, almost a week straight. And I got to tell you guys, I'm really, really, really loving this device. So let me go ahead and, and stop all that and show you guys. It's just about empty, but let me go ahead and give it a bait and show you guys how this thing works. This thing produces a lot of vapor, and this is, I want to say, a one-ohm build that I have in here right now. It just produces. So before we get any further more into my love of this brand new device, I'm going to go ahead and take you down into up-close mode, show you all the parts, take it all apart, show you everything in detail. And then afterward, we'll come back, we'll discuss it a little bit more, and then if you hang out towards the end, I'm going to go ahead and do a rebuild tutorial on this and show you guys exactly how you should rebuild your Aga T7. All right, so hold tight. Let's go ahead and go into up-close mode and show you all the goods. Okay, welcome to up-close mode where we are going to take apart the Aga T7 by UD. I also want to give a big shout out to Magbay and also UD for sending this along for review. You guys have made me a believer in tank systems. So anyways, this is, you know, the normal UD technology display box now. Open it up and it says right there, everything. Tank system, great taste as dripper not really a dripper it is a tank dual coil huge vapor I have to agree with that an adjustable bottle bottom bottle <laughs> adjustable bottom intake air hole all right let's go ahead and take this thing out all right so here is the tank in all of its glory nice glass tank stainless steel construction and then you have your airflow holes let's see if I can show you that so you have one right there and you have one right there and basically you just grab it this one's the newer one it's a little bit harder to do but you just turn it and that's how you adjust your airflow so let's go ahead and show you what else comes in this little box here here's your little instruction guide kind of gives you the basics what kind of tools you're going to need and all the different parts and all that good stuff you can see quite a lot going on on this thing you also get your little toolkit, and this comes with your little Allen wrench so you can open and close the juice fill area. You get two little things of eco wool. Looks like it comes with uh, probably mm, 30 gauge. Looks like some 30 gauge canthal in there. Some extra o rings, some extra screws, and stuff like that. So, nice little kit, and you definitely need to. Hold on to that Allen wrench. Very, 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 very important. Let's go ahead and take this thing apart. First thing I need to do is get my screwdriver. Okay, so here we go. First thing you do is you unscrew the post in the 510. All right, that allows you to unscrew the base. So there's your base, okay? 
This you're never really going to get into unless you're cleaning it or anything like that. But hey, we're doing a review. We're going to take the whole thing apart, show you every little thing we got going on here. All right. Let's go ahead and unscrew the deck. Go. Oh, that looks familiar, doesn't it? You guys seen that before? Yes, you have. That is very similar to a K Fun deck, just on steroids. And this doesn't come off. This is one whole piece. Let's go ahead and take off our chimney cap. And here is the deck. And you see here we got two short posts and two long posts. And you'll see why in a bit as to why we have these decks. Because this short one and this long one are your positives, which you can identify by the insulators. These two over here are your negatives. Those are directly down into the post. I believe they are press set into the deck from what it looks like. All right. And, oh, in dead center, that's your airflow. So your air goes in there, drops down in here, and comes out of your two adjustable airflow holes. Here's our tank. So after you unscrew it, the whole thing just comes apart. It's being held on by these O-rings right here. So you got O-rings. It's kind of blurry. O-ring, O-ring, and then a nice, thick glass tank. So you don't have to worry about, you know, tank cracking juices like you would on a K-Fun. So this is full glass tank. And it just slides right back in. And you put all this stuff back together. Of course, after you build your coil, you don't really want to put this back together without it. Threads are actually really nice on these. Very, very smooth. And then with the O-rings, they tighten and snug down really, really well. So put this back together. And then the top of your chimney, when you screw this back on, is what tightens everything back up. And I got a nice tank set up here. Of course, screw this right back on. And tighten up your 510 pin. One thing that is nice about this, if I'm correct, I mean, this is a pretty long 510 connection here, as you can see. And the pin does stick out just a little bit. But if need be, you can adjust it out if you want. And everything still stays nice and tight. So good job on that, guys over at UD. It is much appreciated because I use a Stingray with a very short pin, even though I don't really have to adjust it. Okay. Now I got the Allen wrench. Let me go ahead and put this right in here. Catch your Allen screw. And we just screw that all the way out. And that's where you fill it up. I use a needle tip bottle. The nice metal tip plastic bottles to fill my juice up in here. Because there really is no other way of filling this. And you definitely want to make sure that you have a nice tight seal because this is a vacuum style tank similar to K-Fun. You hear me talk about that a lot because as I said this is what UD Technologies and everyone else right now on the internet is calling the K-Fun killer. Just because you can do dual coil, you have double the airflow, you hold quite a bit of juice in here. I'm not exactly sure. I want to say, does it say here on the paperwork? Didn't actually research that yet. What does this say here? Capacity, it says 1.5 mils, but I beg to differ with that. I get at least three, possibly even more, in there at a time. Because you're not just filling up this area where the glass is. You're also filling up this whole section right here where your chimney is. So maybe they're saying this portion right here is one and a half, but I'm definitely getting about three mils in here. That's my guess. I haven't actually measured it yet, so I do apologize for not measuring that. And of course, 510 drip tip goes right in there. Okay, so that is the up close and personal with the new UD Agate.
T7. Let's go ahead and go back into regular mode and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Welcome back. So now you got to see the up close of this. Now let's give you a little bit more information. This is made with 304 stainless steel. Really nice quality, polished finish. So it is going to be a little bit of fingerprint magnet, but that's fine. I have no problem with that. I would like to see a brushed finish on this. That would look pretty sweet. And hopefully there'll be some other versions of this as well, because I do have a feeling this is going to be a very, very popular tank system. Just from the simple fact that me as a dripper, I'm finding myself grabbing this over all of my dripping addies and really, really enjoying it. Matter of fact, I'm going to take a bait. Now see, I've tried other tanks, K-Funds, of course, the most popular one. And my biggest problem was always airflow. Always had trouble with airflow. It just wasn't enough. People are out there drilling out their air holes, and breaking off drill bits inside the K-Fund, doing all this stuff. You don't have to do that with this one. This gives you plenty of airflow. I'm sure there's going to be some people out there that want even more because, you know, drippers, we use tons of airflow, but... In all honesty, man, I, I can't find any fault with this. At first, I was building verticals on there, and you're not supposed to build verticals. It was stupid. Total user error. It was flooding. It just it wasn't working. Because if you know how a vacuum system works, I'll show you again with this. When you're dealing with a vacuum-style tank, basically, it's going off of you inhaling. And when you inhale... What you're doing is there's four channels down here underneath this chimney cap. So there's four channels. Let's see if I can get you a good view of this here. There you go. You can see there's two there, another one there, and another one there. So when you inhale, what's happening is the juice is being pulled into these channels, and it needs to go into your wick. If you don't have enough wick there to catch the juice, it's going to flood. You're going to have all sorts of issues. And that was the problem I was having in the beginning until I finally figured out how this thing needs to be built. And basically how it needs to be built, and of course, I'm going to show you guys a full build tutorial at the very end of this video and show you guys exactly how to build this so you can enjoy the same type of vape that I'm getting right now off of this. And let me tell you, it is extremely, extremely enjoyable. People are making fun of me because I'm walking around just smiling like, this tank is awesome. Especially all the people that know me are just like, wow, like Ray on a tank system? Yes. I'm I am a big believer of this. Even with all my drippers, I'm finding myself going back to this every single time. So let's uh let's go ahead and go over the pros and the cons. Pros and cons on this. First we'll start with the cons, because there's really not many cons. The only con that I've really come up with on this is the sound. It's loud. It, it's loud. You're definitely not going to go and take this into the movie theater or wherever else and try and sneak a vape. I mean, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but let me get a little closer. But because you have such a big deck, and you have those two airflow holes and it's coming through and then you have this little chamber down here where your airflow is coming out of there's a lot of air moving through this thing so you are going to have a pretty loud vape it's not overbearingly loud in any way shape or form not anywhere you know crazier than some of the big holes on your drippers but it's definitely not a quiet vape so you can't really sneak vape on this thing But you can see that extra airflow creates a lot of vapor. Now we go to the pros. Pros, nice stainless steel, 304 grade stainless steel. I really like the design. The strip tip does not come with it. But the design, you know, they put all the little extra details in there, the little lines. Everything was machined very well. No sharp edges. Really, really smooth. Threads work beautifully. O-rings and everything in there just work very well, very well manufactured, very well machined. 
adjustable 510 pin so that way if you need to go a little bit longer on your 510 for certain devices like say mine that needs it sometimes you have that option glass tank you don't have to worry about tank cracking juices like the plastic tanks that you get from a k-fund you don't have to go out and buy a quartz tank system and spend even more money and now that I'm talking about money let's talk about the price on this because this is another pro in my opinion big pro in my opinion new D's you guys have always done really good on your pricing and I'm not even just trying to butter you guys up you guys have always been really good with your pricing that's why I really like your company you guys make solid devices you're coming out with innovative products and your price range is still right on par and lower than any other authentics out there this tank system that I've seen for pre-sale was what 34.95 so about 35 bucks for pre-sale on these so maybe 40 bucks after pre-sale is over or maybe it stays around the same internet prices in and around you can't even get a k-fun clone a legit good k-fun clone for under 40 bucks unless of course you're going you know to some other site in China these right here selling on US sites are selling for under 40 bucks a $40 glass dual coil double airflow beautifully machined tank system it hits really well man it, it's so hard for me I feel like I'm gushing on this thing because I truly 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 enjoy the vape that I'm getting off of this and I've never enjoyed a tank vape and I just keep using it I've gone through at least seven or eight tanks full of juice in these last few days just vaping away on it like crazy you get a nice throat hit I do notice that with this tank I do get more of a throat hit than I do on my drippers depending on like well not necessarily on my drippers but other tank systems I've used this does give a pretty hefty throat hit so be ready for that if you're vaping like six milligram twelve milligram you might be able to drop your nick level by using this as well so I guess hey another pro right another pro and there's just there's so many pros to this tank and I would suggest everyone out there that's viewing this spend the money get yourself one of these new UD Aga T7s man I, I have to say in my opinion this blows a K-Fun out of the water it really really does so there you go you guys that's my glorious review on UD's Aga T7 I love it I mean there's really not much more to say on that Everything about this thing has just been great, other than the loudness that I get from the extra airflow. So I would take the loudness of my vape to have that extra airflow, to be able to get bigger clouds on a tank, to get great flavor, because you do get amazing flavor off of this tank as well, almost on par with the dripper, but you know you still have to travel away, so it does cool off the vape a little bit, but hey, it's a dual coil so you're actually producing a lot more vapor and you don't have to make any like special fancy coil double barrel coils or whatever to go in your other tank systems so definitely go out check this thing out order it if you like tanks order it if you're interested in a tank order it if you think it looks good and by the way I just have to show you guys this because I've had this drip tip for a while and it looks perfect look at that it's perfect it's the exact same design that they have on top so you got this nice little step version but that doesn't come with it so we're not talking about the drip tip but I just wanted to point that out because I thought it was pretty cool maybe you guys do maybe you guys don't but anyways I digress the reviews over <laughs> I've talked enough about this product um, you can check online I got this from Magbay they're a wholesale distributor so they don't sell to the general public so go ahead and check around online, see where you can find them. I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to find them for under 40 bucks, and I definitely suggest picking one up if you're interested in getting yourself a tank system because this tank blows pretty much every other tank that I've used out of the water, hands down. So 
Again, thank you to MagBay. Thank you to UD for sending this over for review. It's going to get a lot of use out of me. I really do enjoy it. And you guys made me a believer in vaping on a tank. That's a big deal, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and end the review here. And we're going to go ahead and go into up close mode again. And I will show you guys how to build your dual coil and how to wick on the Aga T7. So if you don't plan on going and watching that part, this is where we say goodbye. And if you are going to stick around and watch the build portion, definitely appreciate it. And as always, vape on. All right, you guys, welcome to the build portion of this review today for the Aga T7. I'm going to go ahead and do a, well, it's really only one, well, I guess there's more coils, but I'll show you the basic coil, the one I've been using that's been working really well. We're going to do a dual horizontal 28 gauge, 28 gauge Canthal build. And I don't have my ohm meter because sadly I left it at work. But I'm going to build the exact same build I had on there before, which was roughly about 1 ohm. At least that's my guess. It's probably a little bit lower. But hey, what do you know? Okay, so here we go. I have my 28 gauge Canthal, and as always, I have my trusty little Allen wrench. And this one is, what is that? Looks like 564 ths. So. I'm going to go ahead and do 10 wraps on this, and I'll make two of them. We'll go ahead and throw it on there. If you don't know how to wrap a coil, I'll show you real quick. Uh, pinch it right here and do 10 wraps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so here's your next step. This is our little coil right here. So the first one we're going to do are the bottom or the shorter screws here because you got the two shorter screws okay so make sure we give ourselves enough meat to get around that because these wrap around the posts and I basically leave it just like so with one leg out this way one leg out that way really easy way to figure this one out is just fine which way it's going to fit right so that's that way we go this way okay so next thing we do here is get it so it's stationed and kind of try and get it centered around that air hole and wrap your wire around oh. This part can be a little tricky if you're new to building, but it's not that hard. One thing I always do, especially when I'm going to be putting wire around the screw, is go the same way that you're going to tighten the screw. That way it sits perfectly and doesn't fall out or adjust the coil when you're tightening down your screw. Let's get that centered. And the same with this one. Wrap it around. Oops. Wrap it around the screw. Okay. So there's our first coil. And as you can not see, because it's blurry. Yeah. As you can see, coil sits directly over the top of the airflow hole. So I'm going to go ahead and make the second coil off camera, and I'll show you how to install that one. All right, so here we are. We have our second coil ready to go. So same time, same thing as the last time. We center it where we would like it to be, and wrap around a screw. Same with this one now. Kind of center it. And wrap it around the screw. 
All right, so there's our build. Next thing I do is kind of take the Allen wrench and point it towards the camera so you guys can actually see what I'm doing and sort of adjust it and get it centered and nice and lined up because you want this to sit evenly over your airflow just like so didn't need too much and you can see there's the gap in between the two coils because you don't want the two coils to touch everything seems to look good and in order so now I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on my stingray fire up these coils and get them all nice and tight alright let's go ahead and give it its first fire here everything fires up nice and hot I'm gonna go ahead and squish a coil Fire up nice and hot and squish a coil. Alright, this one kind of got fudged here. I'll make sure they're not touching each other. That's the most important part. Oh, it's perfect. They're both firing evenly. See if I can get you a good angle here and show you. Look at that. Oh, it's like a mirror. All right, now let's go ahead and get some cotton and show you how to wick it. All right, here is our cotton. Let's go ahead and chop off a little piece here. This next to the coil is probably the most important thing you need to do properly because a proper wick will stop this thing from flooding and you want just the right amount in there not too difficult it only took me about three times before I finally like figured out the right amount here so we'll go ahead and twist the tip a little bit tighter feed it through pull it until it starts to give me a little bit of resistance and I back it out just a little bit All right. There's our first piece. All right, so here we go. Pull it through. So it gives you just enough resistance to move the coil and just back it out a little bit. Okay, so now we got a nice little cross of cotton. And the way I've been doing this is I take it right to the edge of the deck and give it just about, oh man, millimeter or like a sixteenth of an inch. Just enough to tuck into the deck. And the one that's pretty much on the bottom can almost be flush cut. I haven't really had too many problems with stuffing a bunch of cotton in there. As long as you don't cover up your air holes, you're golden. All right, and you just tuck with the trusty paper clip tool. Best tool ever. And I just Tuck my cotton in there ever so nicely and get it so that way it's going to catch in these little grooves here. And you kind of pull it away from the deck wall because you got to screw on your chimney cap. Okay, so there we go. This is what it looks like all wicked up and nice looking. Let me go ahead and grab my juice. We'll juice this thing up, give it a test fire, throw it all back together, show you how to fill it up, and end this video. All right, so this is what I was talking about. Get yourself one of these little needle drips. Seem to fit on most bottles, and today I'm going to be filling this up with the Struggle 1.0 from Lucky Ruckus. So you should always pre-saturate when you're using a tank system like this. Make sure your coils are nice and juicy. Don't flood it, but get the process going. Alright, so let's test fire this baby. Do a quick test fire. There we go. 
firing pretty nice. I'm going to go ahead and put this thing back together and show you how to fill it up. Okay, so we're back. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you how to fill this thing up. As I showed you before, use the little Allen wrench that comes with your Aga T7. Unscrew this little Allen head screw. Needle tip bottle. One thing I've been doing is on the airflow, excuse me, the airflow control ring, I close it off. It just so it doesn't flood in for some reason. But with a nice blunt tip needle here, just go ahead and stick that right in there and start filling it up. Now you can see this thing holds a whole hell of a lot of juice. There we go. That's why I'm wondering why it says 1.5 mil on the package. Almost there. Taking a while. Ugh. Oh, almost. And we're full. Okay, so we're nice and full. We'll go ahead and put this little guy back in here. And be careful you don't drop your screw into your air hole chamber here. You got to take this whole thing apart to rescue it. I almost did that. Almost. So I'm pretty careful about it now. Tighten it till it stops. And let's go ahead and put our airflow back. There we go. go ahead, take a bait. Oh yeah. That's tough. Thanks for sticking around, you guys, and watching the rebuild video. Hope you guys liked it. Pick one up. Enjoy it. And hopefully this video helped you out on learning how to use it and rebuild it. All right, guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you for you guys that stuck around and watched me rebuild this thing. Much, much appreciated. Really do love the fact that you guys watch my videos. And hopefully they're helping you. So as always, everyone, I know this one's probably a, a pretty long one. But I wanted to show you guys how this thing works. So, thank you for sticking around. I'm Ray Lopez. This is my new Ray Low Vapes YouTube channel. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, vape on.